And those are really the two main things we're helping with. Uh, grow your reach and grow your revenue. Welcome to Game Changer, where you get the inside track to win in a decade of disruption. Winning together is how we'll thrive. So go ahead and subscribe and let's crush this business unusual game together. Our guest today is David Ricklin, the founder of selfgrowth.com, one of the top self-improvement websites that's received over 100 million unique visitors since it was created. He's also the co-founder of the Joint Venture Directory, a top resource for finding joint ventures, affiliates, and partnerships in the self-improvement industry. He's a coach and speaker and has authored over 10 books. His two most recent books being Mastering the World of Selling and Mastering the World of Marketing. It's great to have you on board today, uh, David. Welcome. I'm excited to be here. Lots to talk about today. Yeah, exactly. You've done a lot of things, David. You've got a string of accomplishments. What would you say is your most treasured success out of all of that and why? I would say it was the creation of selfgrowth.com. And the goal with selfgrowth.com was very simple. I wanted to create a single resource where people could find a wide range of information to improve their life, to improve their health, their finances and relationships. And we've created something that now has over 400,000 articles and resources mm -hmm. and experts and received literally 100 million unique visitors to the site since we started this in 1995. And for me, the ability to impact that many people over the course of my career and my lifetime is, has just been phenomenal for me. It's been very exciting. Absolutely. 100 million visitors. I mean, that's that's a phenomenal amount of, of um, you, you said unique visitors. Unique visitors, yes. Let's just touch on that um, for a moment, David. I mean, we all know that building a list is gold. So if you've got unique visitors um, and you've managed to attract that amount of, of visitors, can you share maybe some of the strategies that you use to do that or, or something that you have found to be most effective? Absolutely. The interesting thing about selfgrowth.com and how we created it is the fact that we didn't do it in a bubble. Mm -hmm. We did it using partnerships. That's the best way of describing it. When I had originally launched selfgrowth.com, I had a very simple concept. We wanted to provide links for people to find other websites in the self-improvement industry. We wanted people to be able to find goal setting websites and health websites and vitamin websites, all these different areas. And the process is very simple. We reached out and started searching on Yahoo at the time. This goes back to the 90s. Identified the, the top websites in each of the different areas. While we were doing that, we realized it would make sense to work and partner with people. So we reached out to every single one of these websites. We said, we want to put you in a directory. Would you like to link back to us? Mm -hmm. What happened is we, we've created a situation where we have hundreds of thousands of inbound links and companies and websites who referred back to us. And, and we've gotten a lot of traffic because of that. So that, that was really our, our first one. The, the second two things that really brought us to the next level uh, had to do with content. Uh, the next thing we started to do is publishing articles on our website from these experts. We have 30,000 experts. As a simple process, we contacted them and asked for permission to use their content and their articles. And we started publishing these articles, first a couple of articles, then hundreds, then thousands, then tens of thousands. And now hundreds of thousands of articles are on a site. And the way we're able to do that is we had a simple arrangement. We said, in exchange for permission to use your content, we'll give you the ability to link back to your website and get out in front of our audience. So it was a big win-win. So it was another type of partnership. So the, the initial links with the websites, then the content. And the third thing that helped substantially is way back in the late 90s, I had this concept of starting a newsletter, an email newsletter. 
there were very few email newsletters at the time. And I thought to myself, I, I'm sitting here waiting for people to come to our website. So I'd sit there literally and wait. We couldn't make any money till somebody came to the website. I thought to myself, wouldn't, be, wouldn't it be valuable to have a list of people who are interested in what we're doing so I could email them whenever we had something new going on? And I put a little link at the bottom of the website for free self-improvement newsletters, subscribe here. And we started getting subscribers, first tens, hundreds, thousands. And now we have over you know, 250,000 subscribers mm. that get our material every week. Uh, and it was really this combination of all these things brought together that enabled us to, to build selfgrowth.com uh, into a, a website that had a, a substantial impact. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing all of that. And it's nice to see how it all comes together and how over time, um, all this, it's value exchange that, you know, that you're talking about, which, which is amazing, this, this partnership and, and value exchange that creates an outcome like this. And uh, 250,000 subscribers on a list, that's, that's pretty um, incredible. What would you say, David, is your your own personal game changer quality that's that's helped you do so many things over the years or achieve so much? It's a very good question. And it ties back into my life philosophy and my business philosophy, my personal philosophy. And it's a very simple concept. You know, over the years, I've had people come to me saying, We've created this. This is the best thing that there ever is. It's going to change the world. Everybody needs to be doing this. Everybody. And I don't care if it's health related, it's finance. I don't care if it's spirituality, it's religious based. I've had people constantly come over the years saying, this is it. This is the game changer that's going to change everybody's life. Everybody needs to be doing this. And the first few times I heard that, I was like, this is interesting. This guy, this person, this man, this woman really believes in what he's doing. Let me take a look at this. And then the 10th time, I'm like, there's quite a few people that have found the answer. <laughs> uh, and then it, eventually it became very clear to me that there is no panacea. And a, a panacea literally means a cure-all. There is no panacea or cure-all for everybody, for everything. And in life, we need to figure out for who we are mm. and what we want to accomplish, what the best tools, techniques, systems, and people to help us. There's no single cure for anything. Mm -hmm. Everybody's different. And this goes back into health. There's no single weight loss program that's perfect for everybody. There's no single business strategy that's perfect for everybody. There's always outliers and you might be one of the outliers. So I feel our goal is to figure out what systems, what tools are going to work best for us. And I use this in two ways. One, constantly trying to figure out what's going to work best for me. And the, the way to do this, it's a simple concept, is you, you learn about as many techniques as possible. Based on your knowledge, you make a first best guess. What do you think is the most likely thing to help you? And whatever it is you want to do. If you want to get your podcast in front of more people, if you want to increase your revenue, uh, if you want to lose weight, if you want to find the partner of your dreams, whatever it is, you need to figure out based on everything that you've learned and all the experts out here, which one is going to provide the most likely candidate to succeed. And then you need to move ahead with that strategy. And, and this is the really important thing. You need to watch and measure its effectiveness. And you need to look and you need to take an honest evaluation and say, is this really working for me? And if it isn't working, you need to be prepared to either modify it, change it, or completely flat out stop what you're doing <laughs> and find another option. You need to really learn from it. And, and that's been my strategy, my philosophy over years. And you know, it's uh, some people call it the, the throw stuff against the wall and see what sticks. But I, uh, and some people use a, another term for sh throwing stuff against the wall. But my, <laughs> my theory is you need to, in an educated way, figure out the best things to throw against the wall. What's the most likely to work and stick? 
and be prepared if it's not working, sticking to, to change. And sometimes you need to, to literally change in a heartbeat. You know, mm-hmm. you need to say, this isn't working. Stop, reset and go again. Hmm. What a nice comprehensive answer to, to what you've been doing. So, and, and, and that's what you've applied. You said it was your philosophy. So you're watching out, measuring, doesn't stick. You're going to try to throw something else until yes. it sticks. <laughs> yes. Okay. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. It's a great philosophy. And, and I, I agree with you, David. I, I'm a believer in that we don't need more copycats in the world, which we so much have been taught to do, that not everybody else's systems and strategies can work for us. And, and exactly what you've said. We all have different codes. And um, just because someone else got uh, to a billion dollars because of what they use doesn't mean it's going to work for us, even if we follow it 100% verbatim. So um, I agree. So uh, let's talk about some powerful success insights. This is your domain. I mean, you've, you've... put the selfgrowth.com together. So please share one of your favorite whiz bombs with our audience, something that would be of value to them. One of the things I want to point out relative to this concept of no panacea or no cure-all is there are a system of techniques and ideas that have been proven to work for a large percentage of the people. So I mentioned that for you as an individual, a specific one might not work. And it could be in growing your business. It could be in any particular area of your life. So you might find something and say, well, well, I saw Franklin Covey, Stephen Covey, Seven Habits. He did this and he he grew his business this way. Or Tony Robbins did this. Or you might have a a particular person that you're looking at and say, well, they did it this way. Uh, I still strongly believe there's no one way that's going to work for everybody. But with that said, I, I've seen a wide range of what I call tenet, tenants, or at, at one point I, I called them the, the 10 commandments of self-improvement. Uh, and if we have a few minutes right now, I'd like to share these 10. Because for, for me, these are the 10 that I live by, and these are the 10 I recommend. But back to what I said before, they might not be the 10 for you, but, but these are the ones that have worked for the largest group of people. Uh, And I recommend starting at least understanding them. And one of the interesting things about them, you'll see as I go through them, is you're gonna think to yourself, of course, uh, I know that, I've heard that. You know, these are things that we've heard from since we were little children, for the most part. Uh, And they're important in that I think we need to go back to them time and time again, because in many cases we aren't doing them. We might have heard about it, we might know about it, and, and we can quickly go through them. And, and my thoughts right now is I can just tell you the 10 very quickly, and then we can jump in and go in a little bit more detail on any specific one that, that makes sense. Is that, uh, that a good strategy? Brilliant strategy. Go ahead with the 10, and then I'll, I'll pick one. All right. And I'm going to ask anybody listening, and for you as well, Carmen, feel free to write them down. As I said, the These are ones that you probably know, but I I recommend writing them down. And later on after our interview, for anybody listening, write them down and ask yourself, first, are you aware of it? Second, are you doing it? (laughs) So those are really the two questions. And if you're not doing it, you got to figure out why, and then you start doing it. So let's go through them. And and as we go through them, Carmen, I'd like to get some feedback from you. Mm -hmm. We'll, We'll take some breaks in between whether or not this is th- something that you might consider common sense and are, are people doing. It. So the, the first one's very simple. It's a simple starting point where a lot of people promote this, that it's really critical to take responsibility for whatever area of your life you want to change. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of us are in this victim mode where we're blaming people and we're not taking responsibility. Oh, it's not my fault. I was raised this way. My teachers, my environment, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Number one is to take responsibility. If you're not willing to take responsibility, you're most likely not going to be able to make a change. Very simple one. Take responsibility. 
The second one is take action. Small action, massive action. I don't care what our beliefs are. I don't care if we're losing the law of attraction and we're trying to attract things in and we have the mindset and you know we're doing affirmations. If you're not taking action, nothing's going to happen. Yeah. You need to take physical, physical action and external action. So that's the number two. Uh, the number three one, which I feel is very important, is you need to have a strong desire to make whatever change it is that you want. Uh, and for me, it ties into, in many cases, knowing your why. If you know why you want to do something, it will enable you to get into your desire and enable you to do the other things, to, to take action, to be persistent, all those things. Uh, the, the next two are very simple ones. And corporate America taught me this years ago that you need to set goals. And I recommend written goals. And for those who aren't familiar, you can look up the term SMART goals. Mm -hmm. S-M-A-R-T. Most of us in the industry know about SMART goals, but you can look it up. We don't need to go over it right now. You need to set these goals and develop a plan. And the plan needs to include what you need to do, what other people need to do, what resources, what potential roadblocks you have. And these are the what I consider the first five basic tenets mm -hmm. to make changes in your life. And I want to take a quick break and ask you, Carmen, <clears throat> Are these things that you're familiar with? And, and if so, are they things you're constantly doing and, and on top of? Yeah, so for sure, I'm familiar with it. It's what I teach. It's what I live by. And 100% um, um, with all of them. The, the interesting thing about these, David, is they mostly, like you said, common sense. Um, yet the, the crux of it is not everyone is doing it. It makes common sense. You know, if you ask people a top 10 list, these most of these are going to be on that list in terms of what is going to get you to success. Yet, so few, few people do it. And, and, and one of the big things is this, this goal thing that I find is people don't necessarily know what they want. Um, I found so often that people, when you ask people what they want, they first thing they tend to say is what they don't want such an interesting um you know over the 25 years I've been coaching is something that I've picked up so so much so fabulous let's let's go on and then we'll pick one to go all right coach. let's jump in the next five so the the next one's an interesting one we need to be prepared to pay the price mm -hmm. if you want to get something in your life you need to exchange something for it that exchange could be your time to get an education. It could be, if you're trying to lose weight, it could be paying the prices, eating less food or eating healthier food or stop going out to dinner. So whatever it is, you need to be prepared to pay the price. And the, the next one's very important as well. It's critical. And it's something I know I don't always do. You need to be prepared to learn from your mistakes. We're going to make mistakes along the way. Uh, you, need to re, you, know, you need to learn from those mistakes. And, and one of the ways I like handling mistakes is reframing them. Mm -hmm. And by reframing, it's a very simple concept. Instead of looking at it as a mistake, looking at it as a learning opportunity and think to yourself, what did I learn from this attempt? You attempted something, it didn't work out as you expected. As long as you walk away learning something, it wasn't a mistake, you benefit. And the, the next one I think is one we all know as well. You need to be persistent, consistent, you can't start and stop. And this is something that we all do. Uh, and I'm going to go back to the weight loss. I can't tell you how many people are on a yo-yo mm -hmm. or a roller coaster of weight loss. Guess why? You're not being persistent. You start, you stop, you start, you stop. I get it. Uh, there's a lot of distractions out there. And the, the next one I want to mention is having a strong belief in yourself and a strong belief in your ability to do what it is you want to accomplish, whether or not you do it alone or get help from other resources that you're going to accomplish it. So you need to have this really strong belief. And finally, the last one ties a bit into psychology. It's the concept of visualization, where I'm a strong believer that it's, it's very powerful and helpful to picture or visualize yourself succeeding and get in the 
the physical, the mental state of succeeding, mm -hmm. the physical, the mental, emotional state of succeeding, because by doing so, it will enable you and to power you through those times when there's distractions or low energy or any of a number of a you know, hundred things that are stopping you. Mm. Uh, and I found these five in combination with the first five I talked about, if, if you're on top of your game, will help catapult you to the next level of, of wherever you want to get in your life. David, true to form, thank you. I ask you for a whiz bomb and you give me, you 10 exit. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh, what, a good, what an overachiever. Uh, and um, selfgrowth.com, he brings us 10, 10 tenets. Thank you for those. And let's talk a little bit about the, the final one, because to me, that is such a power. If you have that right coupled with the goals the other things are it's almost like that pulls you um when you've got this powerful visualization your future vision and you can combine that with the right message that would go with that vision and the feelings the, the emotions that go with it maybe you can give me a little bit more of what that is done for you in in your life um and and because it's, it's it's a skill, and you have to sometimes teach yourself to go there and really see it. So, what has that done for you, David? I'll take you back a few years, twenty plus years. Mm -hmm. I started selfgrowth.com first as a hobby, then as a side business. And one of the things that I did early on is I created this picture in my mind of what I wanted self growth to be and how I wanted to impact people. And it was a very clear picture. I'm still not there. The picture I have is much bigger than I've created so far. I'm still not there, but I had this clear picture. Picture is still in my head. And there were a few places along the road where I hit some roadblocks. And I'll, I'll give you an example. There was a time where I was very close to leaving my full-time job and taking my part-time website business, selfgrowth.com, and running full-time with it. Right before that happened, I ran into an email spam issue. At the time I started building up an email list and I had thousands of people on the email list. And I used early technology to send the emails out. And I remember I'd sent an email out updating all my advertisers and all my content providers about what we're doing. <clears throat> Something very interesting, bizarre and painful happened. I sent an email out from David Ricklin saying, just want to update. I want to thank everybody for being part of my community. This is great. I'll be sending you more information about what we're doing. If you have any questions, let me know. Someone responded to that email and said, thanks, David, but I no longer want to be part of what you're doing. Uh, can you please take me off your list? But what was interesting is that email instead of going just to me, went to everybody on my list. Oh, wow. A few minutes later, I got another email from someone else on the list. He said, said, Dave, please keep me on your list. But why is this other person emailing me and bothering me about what he wants to do with you? Why am I getting that? That went to everybody on the list. <laughs> so that went to these thousands of people. And then a fourth person saw that and said, what are you, stupid? Why are you sending this to me? Why am I getting all these emails from you? I don't know any of these people. This is really stupid. That went to everybody on the list. And then the, the next person emailed back saying, you guys are complete idiots. <laughs> How the hell are you running this business? And it kept going round and round. Oy. 20 emails later. People were dropping off the list. People were telling me, cursing me out, telling me uh, horrible things. You, your mother should do this and blah, blah, blah. Horrible, horrible things. And this happened really, really quickly. And it took me about a half an hour, 45 minutes to get the technology to shut it down. In that 45 minutes, my business was set back two years. Sure. It took two more years before I could go full time with my business. That's how much damage was done. Wow. And the one thing that kept me going was this picture I had in my head of where I wanted to go. I wasn't going to let this setback stop me. 
And it was critical that I had this picture, this vision in my head, because if I didn't have it, I could have easily said, you know what, screw this. This isn't working. Let me go do something else. I don't need this. Uh, and it was a vision. So when you have a strong vision, that's not only a picture, it's an emotional feeling. It's an intellectual perspective. If you have that and it's strong enough, it will drive you through these failures. You know, some people use the concept of uh, a vision board. Mm. They literally cut out pictures and they put it on a board. Some people describe it to themselves. Some people use affirmations. There's a wide range of ways of doing it. But that image and that vision kept me going. That's an incredibly powerful story, David, because firstly, she's in, in, in literally under an hour, the impact of something of a few people on many people that has such a time impact is, is, is almost sure, like a dagger. Um, it, it pierces. Yet the story you have just shared with us literally covers all 10 of those tenants because through that powerful vision, you could take responsibility for what went down, take action. You, the desire to keep going was there. You, you probably set new goals, developed a plan, you paid the price, hey? How is that? Yes. <laughs> you had to learn from that mistake. You were persistent for sure. Um, you had a strong belief that not, that wasn't going to get you down and that visualization kept you going. So what a powerful story to, to wrap that, all of those 10 up in, in, in that power of intent, um, which I know in my life has also been a, the reason I'm in Mauritius living on an island is, is part of what was on my vision board as a teenager living on an island. Right. And, and here I am. Thank you for that, um, David. Let's talk about JV. Um, we, we, we're in a highly complex competitive world, yeah, and collaboration and co creation joint ventures, it's never actually been more important than it is right now, even in this, particularly in this digital space. But we know it's not as easy as quickly javing with somebody and um, like a quick handshake. It's not necessarily as easy as that. What have you found entrepreneurs' challenges to be? Some of the bigger challenges when it comes to, to partnering or javing? Let me start by sharing my perspective, my broad perspective on this concept of joint ventures. Mm -hmm. So in the, in the world outside the internet and outside the business community that I'm in, joint ventures was typically considered a, a concept where two large companies, you know, Microsoft and AT&T get together, they invest and they build a third company and they run with that. That's traditionally what's called a joint venture in the corporate environment. For me, joint ventures are very different. For me, a joint venture in our industry, which is the digital industry, it's self-improvement, it's internet marketing, the, the whole space of kind of the digital world and self-improvement is the concept of two people working together to support two people or two companies working together to support and grow their business. And that takes many, many forms. Some people call them joint ventures. Some people call them partnerships. Some people call them collaborations. Mm -hmm. And there are a wide range of ways and methods to do it. And some of them depend on where you are in the life of your business. Uh, some of them depend on what kind of reach you have. And uh, some of them depend on what you're comfortable doing. But it's a, a simple concept. Uh, two people get together and they support each other. So for me, Joint ventures and the, the knowledge of joint ventures started with a very simple concept that had to do with people who had email lists. And here was a very simple concept. I have an email list of people interested in self-improvement. You have an email list of people also interested in self-improvement, maybe meditation, goal setting. We each have different non-competitive products or services. What do you think of the idea of me sending out an email to my list recommending you and you send an email to your list recommending me. And the concept is very simple. What would happen is we both recommend each other and then I'd get some people from your list onto my list and you'd get people from my list onto your list. So in essence, 
we'd both grow our lists, we'd both grow our reach, we'd both grow our audience, our revenue, et cetera, et cetera. And for me, that was the first time I heard about joint ventures. And it was a simple concept, support each other in email. And over time, I learned there's really a wide range of ways to do this. And we've actually identified 21 different ways to grow your business using joint ventures, collaborations, and partnerships. We don't have time to go into those all today, but we can spend some more time talking about it. And uh, if it works for you, Carmen, I'd like to share, we've created a free report on it. And I'd like to offer everybody in your audience an opportunity to download and get the report. Oh, fantastic. Uh, that's, that's really right, so, great. Thanks, David. All right. So let me give out the website. Our website is jointventuredirectory.com. So you just need to go to www.jointventuredirectory.com forward slash 21 ways.html. So it's jointventuredirectory.com forward slash 21 ways.html. Great. And I will but, have the link in the show notes. All right. So back to the question of how do you approach this whole joint venture thing? You know, people are at different levels. My general view is you need to first understand what value you bring to the table. So if you're looking to do joint ventures and partnerships, you need to understand how can I help other people? In essence, in every relationship, there needs to be a benefit for both sides, for every fair relationship. And, and the goal is to have a win-win. You want a win-win. Actually, you're looking for a win-win-win, a triple win. And the way I describe it, let's say we're doing two, we're working together. Uh, you're supporting me. I'm supporting you. It's a win-win for the two of us. But we also want our audience and our customers to win. Yeah. So I describe it as a win-win-win. So we need to each figure out independently what we bring to the table. So in my case, I do have an email list. I also have website traffic. I do interviews on Facebook. You know, I do a lot of social media with Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter. So there are all these different tools. I have certain areas of expertise that I can help people with. I have personal contacts that I can introduce people to. So you need to figure out do you have a reach where you can promote people? Do you have a podcast? Do you have specific knowledge that you can help someone grow their business? Can you brainstorm with people? And once you identify and figure out what you're bringing to the table, you can then approach people with a partnership opportunity and explain, I'd love to partner with you. Here are some of the things and some of the ways I can help you. Would you be interested in working together? And it could start as something very, very simple. So right now, we're involved in a partnership. And I'll explain what I mean by that. So uh, Carmen has a podcast. I'm on your podcast. So you have an audience that you're reaching right now. So you're helping me get out in front of that audience. Right now, the thing that I'm providing is I'm providing two things, a few things. One, quality con hopefully quality content. <laughs> yes. <laughs> your audience will have to decide the quality of the content. But uh, I'm hoping I'm bringing some quality content and experience. That's one of the things I'm bringing. I'm also pro uh, providing value to your audience in that I have this free giveaway mm -hmm. uh, that I've offered. There's 21 ways to catapult your business using joint ventures. So I'm providing something. So it's a win-win for both of us. And it's a smaller level. It's, it's different than me sending an email out to 200,000 people and you sending an email out to 150,000. But I want people to think about joint ventures, partnerships, and collaborations on all different levels. In a, a very simple level, two people have websites. They can have a resource page on each of their websites where one links to another. They, they each link to each other. And they're providing what would be considered search engine juice <laughs> to help build their business. So I, I really want you to understand what you bring to the table uh, as you're approaching people. And then get an understanding of what you're looking uh, in terms of value to in exchange for what you can bring to mm -hmm. the table. And that's the, really the core of how I see these joint ventures, whether you call them joint ventures, partnerships, collaborations. It's really a, a, a core focus and a core starting point. Hmm. Give us a, an idea of what the JV directory is all about, David, and, and what makes that such a game changer for for entrepreneurs wanting to find these partnerships? Great question. Love to share some information about it. 
one of the challenges that I've seen over the literally decades of doing this is finding the right people to work with. So you need to find the right people to work with. Then you need to figure out how to contact them. And then you need to contact them knowing your expertise and knowing what you could bring to the table. And I, I found there's really a wide range of ways to go out there. So you can start and search Facebook and you look for people on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and Pinterest. You can go there. You can contact your friends and ask them. <laughs> and, you, know, you can start listening to podcasts and then you can go back and you have a lot of podcasts. I can listen to all your podcasts and see you interviewed. So there's a, a ton of ways mm -hmm. to go out and find potential partners to work with. And a lot of these ways are very time consuming and you can't tell if you have the right person mm -hmm. that you're working with. So one of the things we started to develop was something we call our joint venture director. It's specifically targeted towards businesses that are in what I describe as the broad self-improvement space. And for us, the self-improvement space is very broad. It's this big umbrella that includes anybody in the business of helping people improve their lives. So whether you help people improve their business or their health or their finances or relationships or increase spirituality, if you have a business where you're providing value that helps people improve your life, we're looking to help you with our, our joint venture directory. And I know you're in that business. Mm -hmm. You help people grow their business. You help people grow themselves personally. So you're obviously, and many of your business listeners are probably in that, in that same space yeah. as well. So we've created this directory of literally a thousand plus members who are working together to support each other. And the way we do this is very simple. You join the joint venture directory. There's a, a small annual fee to be a member. Once you create your membership, you create a profile for yourself. And the, the profile includes information about who you are, what you do, and who you want to partner with. Very important, includes information on who you want to partner with and how you can help them. Mm. So who you want to partner with and why they should partner with you. And then you can share specific information about what you want to do. I want to cross promote by email. I want to get on podcasts. I want to be a speaker. I'm looking for affiliate marketing. You put all that information in. And once you put it in, people can find you based on your information, search for you and contact you through the joint venture directory. Ah. And that's the, the kind of the core of what it is and what we're doing. So it just slices through a whole whole bunch of headaches and time and and brings you in front of people who are have signed up there because they're there to find partnerships and and people who want to to share and and do a value exchange absolutely and in addition to the directory itself we host uh two monthly networking they're virtual networking events through zoom where you can interact and we always have, uh, we typically have 100 to 150 people who are all business owners that want to partner. So we provide a wide range of other tools and ways for people to grow their business. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I know our audience is going to want to have a look and I mean, it's, it's really cost effective. <laughs> You know, I mean, I was when I had a look at it, I thought, wow, all this, this value for, for really a nominal fee. Um, at the end of the day, given the value that you're going to receive. So give us an idea. Maybe you can think of a, a story of a, a partnership that you're aware of that's happened through the JV directory. Give us a, share a success story that, that pops to mind as a result of something like that, of being in this space. Oh, absolutely. And, and we have many of them. Mm. And one of the things I want to mention for folks who are interested in finding more information about it, uh, a first good step would be to download the free report mm. that I mentioned. So jointventuredirectory.com forward slash 21 uh, ways.html. So download that to begin with, and we'll send you additional information in terms of what we're doing. So, uh, there's multiple stories. So I'll, I'll give you an example of, of one that jumps out to me. Uh, so we had someone who providing services and their job and, and their business was uh, helping people use publishing to get the word on what they do. 
So they help create books, they help do publishing in a, a number of ways. And I mentioned the directory itself, and then I mentioned these networking opportunities. In the networking opportunities, uh, the way it's set up is someone has an opportunity to first network in small groups. And then uh, the second half of the networking is everybody gets a chance to do literally a one minute talk about who they are in front of a hundred people, a hundred business owners. And uh, this one particular person that we work with, she came up and she gave her one minute pitch. And then after the one minute pitch, she shared all the details about, you know, who I am and how to contact me. Someone who just listened to her one minute pitch was part of the community, called her up, signed up for a $7,500 package, literally within a week or two, uh, and kind of kickstarted. And the, the investment for a full year as part of our joint venture directory, that's $497 for a full year. Mm -hmm. So to get a, a first deal, $7,500 obviously paid for itself. Uh, and we have many, many partnerships where people have provided support for each other by email, uh, getting on podcasts. One, one of the things we found on uh, as part of this is we have literally 500 plus podcasts that are in the directory. So you can search based on your niche and find podcasts and reach out. And we've had uh, hundreds of people that are getting on podcasts and finding people to cross promote. And so th there's definitely an opportunity to, to really build two things. One, help you build your platform by getting out in front of a lot of people and help you build your revenue by working with specific people that you can partner with to, to generate immediate income. And, and those are really the two main things we're helping with. Uh, grow your reach and grow your revenue, grow your income. Hmm. And both critical at, at a time where, where the market, the digital market is, it's, it's an ocean and uh, you need to swim in the ocean now. And if you're surrounded by these incredible people around you that really want to partner and, and have your back, then, um, you know, it to me is that you, you can, there's many resources that you can get into the in the world and and in abundance. Time is um, not one of those. So if you can save any sort of time and cut through the noise out there, then a resource like this is is certainly um, of value. Let's look into the future decade, David. What would you say is a scary and an exciting disruption that's that's on the horizon for you. So this ties back to one of the things I was talking about in terms of taking responsibility. So one of the things I see happening more and more, and it's, an, it's a disruption that's happening right now and we're living it. And uh, my hope is there'll be, it'll turn into a positive disruption is to, really two things. One is, the world is separating people in many cases into kind of victim and oppressor. And people are taking sides and a lot of people are positioning themselves as a victim now. They're either their oppressor and the oppressed. Uh, so that's one, one thing that's going on. It's, and one of the things that's really facilitating that is on the political and social agenda of the world, there's two, there's, for virtually every single area of your life you could think of, there's two opposing forces that are getting louder and louder, mm -hmm. screaming. I don't care if it's politics in the U.S. of you know, your view of, you know, Republican versus Democrat, or your view on how to deal with health, or your view on how to deal with business. There, there seems to be opposing sides that are constantly screaming at each other, putting each other down. Mm -hmm. And that's been growing over the last few years. And I think a, a main reason it's been growing is because of Social media is, has had a, a substantial impact. And we're at a point where it looks like it's just going to be getting worse. Right now, it's just getting worse. The voices are getting louder. The vehemence and the, the disgust for each other is getting stronger. And this is a big disruptor. I think it, it's hurting people personally. It's hurting people. It's hurting us culturally. It's hurting us politically. It's hurting us financially. It's hurting us in every way, shape, or form. Uh, my hope is that 
over the next 10 years that we learn how to cope with these forces and gain the understanding that partnership and collaboration are the approach to take. That the left and the right, whether it's left and the right or whatever area of their life, instead of opposing and, and hitting each other and, and smashing against each other, they realize that they need to work together and collaborate to find solutions for the problems in the world. That, and that's, that's my hope of what's gonna happen. And part of that I believe is a need to, for individuals to get a handle on how to deal with social media because it's, it's pulling us apart. I, I have three young kids, they're 18, 19, and 21. And I see the impact that social media has had on them. I see the impact it has on our culture, whether it's the fear of missing out, this FOMO, or, or these false perceptions that people are creating or false information that's going out. And I, I'm hoping we learn to cope with it. So, so for me, the big change is going from kind of, working against each other to collaborating more. Uh, and, and my hope is that we will, we will get to that point. I think it's gonna take 10 years or more to get to that point that we realize that this isn't working and, and we start doing it more and more. Hmm. So is that both the, the scary thing is, is, is that we've got these opposing forces and the exciting thing is the opportunity to turn that around and, and, and the collaboration. Okay. Yes. So both, yeah. both in one, it's both, it's both frightening and an opportunity all at the same time. Yeah. And as a culture, as a, as a, the human race, my hope and belief is that we will figure it out. We'll, we'll learn that we need to figure it out together. Yeah. That, that's, that's my it. hope. It, and it fits, ties in beautifully with, with the, the vision and um, for the show, the ethos of the show is uh, Let's make collaboration the new competition. And our, our, our payoff line is winning together. So fits in right there with what um, I believe is what we need, David. So um, thanks for sharing that. What is the next for you, David? What's, what's on that vision board now? For me, the first thing on the vision board is to figure out how to implement that original vision that I had. <laughs> Okay. So I'm still I'm still working on that, but now I have two visions. One is to provide tools for individuals to support each other, more effective personalized tools for people to to gain the self improvement they want. And the second one now is to aggressively work with businesses in this broad self improvement space to help them partner and collaborate to build better businesses, to impact more people, and to, to make this place a, a better world to live in. Mm. And uh, that our world sure needs. <laughs> what would you, what tips would you give to entrepreneurs right now in, in, in this interesting mix? Um, that we were in to start doing right now and stop doing right now to if they are to thrive? What would that be, David? What I would do is simply what we've been saying here, start focusing on ways to work with people, collaborate with people, partner with people. Even if they don't necessarily agree with you in certain areas, look to focus on how you can work together, not what separates you, focus on how you can work together. And in terms of stopping, stop putting yourself in a victim position mm -hmm. that I can't do this because the world's trying to stop me, stop my business, stop me personally, uh, move away from that victim mentality and start empowering yourself with uh, the abilities that you know you have. Hmm. You've given us so much um, richness to, to think about, David, and, and to um, you, you've given us such a great glimpse into what you've developed between selfgrowth.com and your, your JV directory. So let's, last question, um, what's the change that you'd love to see in the world that, that just would be that game changer for humanity? 
The game changer, I think, first is this realization that many of the things that we're doing are not working. Mm -hmm. It's separating us and it's destroying us. Uh, whether it's destroying the environment, it's destroying us mentally and increasing the stress in the world, uh, damaging our health. We need to realize that many of the things we're doing are not working. You know, back to this no cure all. If you're doing something and it's not working, we need to focus on figuring out what solutions are working and, and put our time and effort into that. And for me, back to what I said, we, we need to focus on this partnership collaboration and what are the best ways we can work together to, to raise all boats? You know, the, the old saying is uh, the high tide raises all boats. Mm -hmm. So we need to work together on developing this high tide. Yeah. And I mean, how much fun will we have if we were able to do exactly this and play in our lane, pay, play according to our strengths, and then bring in all the people that have the other stuff we don't have? Um, and, and create this richness. It, it's just, it seems again, David, like, isn't that freaking obvious to do? <laughs> like, what the hell is wrong with us? Why, <laughs> Why are you fighting against something that is so flippant obvious, has so much benefits, and would allow us to play a lot more, having fun? Um, thank you. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for sharing your um, genius with us today, David, and creating these rich resources that can save us time and um, help us um, just be better human beings. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and uh, to our Game Changer family, thanks for being here as well. And if you haven't yet already, please go ahead and subscribe either here on YouTube or also on um, bwbtv.net if you want email notifications and other news. And uh, until next time, wishing you the wildest success and oceans of love.